At various times during this project, you may be required to grow up plants to generate seed for experiments. We call this farming. We begin with bagging the plants with plastic sleeves, followed by what we do to collect and store those seeds. After that, we'll go over how to collect tissue to be sent to the genotyping labs. We will end with a discussion of record keeping for these activities. In a typical round of farming, you will be growing our selected phytometer lines plus many salk knockout lines chosen by the project PIs. Planting methods were discussed in a separate podcast. We begin this one as the plants are bolting. We want to make sure that the plants don't fertilize each other once they have flowers, so we will isolate them with plastic sleeves. The tapered bottom end of the sleeve is large enough so that the bottom of the pot goes through, but small enough so that it fits snugly around the top of the pot. You will probably have to keep checking to see which plants need to be bagged as they may not bolt at the same time. Occasionally, these bags cause excess moisture to get trapped with the plant and mold may grow. Your lab may choose not to use these plastic sleeves. Once the fruits begin to ripen, which you can recognize by the brown salix, you can begin harvesting the seeds. You will harvest from each plant multiple times. Have a labeled envelope ready. You'll want to have the line number and the flat number, and the date of each time you've harvested written on the envelope with your initials. At Barnard, we lay our plants down on the bench and place an open envelope into the sleeve. We then knock the seeds down into the envelope. Once the plant is dried up and you have completed your last seed harvest, you will put the seeds in a tube for more permanent storage. Print labels with the name of the line, the name of the farm, and the date, and place these labels on 1.5 milliliter tubes. At Barnard, we get the seeds into tubes by cutting the envelope. First, make sure to check that there are no plant parts, besides seeds of course, in the envelope. You may have to remove empty siliques that have fallen in. Knock the seeds down into one corner of the envelope and then cut diagonally across this corner above where the seeds are. You've made a pocket. Use this to carefully pour the seeds into the tube. Make sure that you do this over a white piece of paper in case you spill some. Check that there are no stray seeds on this paper between each tubing to avoid contamination. Seed tubes should be boxed and organized in your refrigerator. Use the name of the farm, the date, the name of the corresponding spreadsheet file, and your initials on the box label. In this example, the farm is from fall 2011, and the file name is Round 1 Salk Knockouts. It's also helpful to indicate which part of a set this is. Here, this is box number 2 of 7. Our farms are also used to generate tissue for genotyping. After the plants have bolted, but before they come brown and crispy, you will take one leaf from the rosette and put it in a labeled tube to be sent one of the unpacked labs responsible for genotyping. The label should have the line number, the name of the farm, the location, and the date. You can also add the line number with a sharpie to the top of the tube for easy reference. Currently, we are sending these samples on dry ice, although in the past we've sent them dry with a desiccant. Check with your university's safety guidelines before sending any material on dry ice. This part of the podcast is just an overview, so don't send your package without going over relevant delivery service guidelines first. Generally, you will take a styrofoam container and add pieces of dry ice. Here we are using 2 kilograms. Secure your tubes inside their box by adding paper to fill in the empty space. Then wrap the box in plastic wrap or tinfoil and secure it with tape so the tubes don't go all over the place. Place the styrofoam box into a cardboard box and attach the appropriate labels and warnings. Please remember to check with your lab safety guidelines before you send any of this material. All collected materials should be recorded in a spreadsheet. Usually this spreadsheet is shared with your lab. 
You will document which lines were farmed, which seeds were collected, and which tissue was sent to a genotyping lab. It's helpful to have a rough estimate of how many seeds you collected. Use a guide such as this one to estimate how much seed was generated for that line in the farm.